come down to the water, forget every care, and you will find him waiting. The Prince of Life is there. He flows in the river, soars on the summer air. His love is all around you. The Prince of Life is there. Open up. Good morning, my name is Mike Silver. I thank you for joining us. The title of this talk is Eyes to See and Ears to Hear. And we're gonna start with a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings you give us every day. And we ask that you'd open our eyes to see and give us ears to hear. And we ask your touch on this talk. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've got uh, this guy here. He's uh, been out in the desert. He's pretty ragged. He's got bones hanging on and rocks, and he looks like he's pretty thirsty and hungry. He kind of represents the people we're going to look at today, the children of Israel out in the desert for 40 years. Now, I'm, I'm going to start by reading some verses from 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. For I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our fathers were all under the cloud. If you don't know, when God took the children of Israel into the wilderness for 40 years, God's presence was seen as a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night. Now we're still in verse 1, and they all passed through the sea. Remember, God dried up the waters of the Red Sea and the entire nation of Israel walked through the sea on dry land to get to the other side. Verse 2, And they were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. The whole nation was baptized into the leadership of Moses, who was God's man, God's prophet. They were transitioning from Egypt to the promised land, from slavery to freedom, from being under the oppression of Pharaoh to being baptized into the kingdom of God. Now verse 3, And they all ate the same spiritual food. God fed them with manna from heaven, a form of spiritual food. And Jesus called himself the bread from heaven. And Jesus said, Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. I am the bread that comes down from heaven, so that anyone who eats from me will live forever. Jesus is our true spiritual food from him. Verse 4, And they all drank the same spiritual drink. God gave them water to drink, which miraculously flowed out of a rock, a form of spiritual drink. Jesus called himself the living water. Jesus is our true spiritual drink. Again, verse 4, and they were drinking from a spiritual rock, a spiritual rock which followed them, and the rock was Christ. 1 Corinthians 10 connects the children of Israel in the wilderness directly with Jesus. There's that guy in the wilderness. Paul says the spiritual rock which they drank from was Christ himself. Now to verse 5. Nevertheless, with most of them, God was not well pleased. Moses said in Deuteronomy 29, you, you all saw that what the Lord did before your eyes in the land of Egypt. You saw it, yet you do not have eyes to see or ears to hear. Verse 11 from 1 Corinthians 10. Now these things happened to them as an example to us. And they were written for our instruction upon whom the ends of the ages have come. In other words, these aren't historical records just to have historical records. The whole event of God delivering Egypt 
Israel from Egypt and leading them through the wilderness for 40 years was written for us to learn how God will work with his people as we near the end of the age. So whatever is coming with Christ's return, it will be similar to when God brought the nation of Israel out of Egypt. There are two characteristics of Israel's 40-year wilderness journey that I want to focus on that we can learn from for us today. Number one, it was a plain path that God had them walk on. In other words, there was no doubt God was leading and guiding Israel. God's presence and glory was visible, visibly seen not only by the people of Israel, but also by their enemies. God's power was being used on behalf of the nation in an ongoing way. He poured out the ten plagues on Egypt. He brought them through the Red Sea. He miraculously fed and clothed all two million of them in the desert for two years, for 40 years. He came down on Mount Sinai in a great demonstration of power and glory and gave them his law. There was no doubt God was leading Israel, and the path God was leading them is clear for all to see. It was a plain path. Because 1 Corinthians 10, which we just read, speaks about this time, that these events were written for our instruction. In the same way it was a plain path for Israel to follow back then, so too it will be a plain path for us to follow. However Jesus comes, there will be no question where God is moving, where Jesus is moving. Everyone will see what Jesus is doing and where he is going, even Jesus' enemies. First, it will be a plain path. Second, there will be a certain sound. The Bible says a trumpet is sounded to bring forth a certain sound to deliver a message. Revelation 1.10 says Jesus will come speaking like a trumpet. He will speak a certain sound. When God spoke to Jesus from heaven in John chapter 12, verses 28 to 29, the people said it thundered. When the angel spoke to Daniel in Daniel 10, and then later, when Jesus spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, the people who were with them did not perceive the voices. They did not have ears to hear. They fled in fear. But Daniel and Paul in both situations heard the words and saw the visions. In the same way, those who love Jesus know his voice. It is a certain sound. Jesus said his sheep know his voice, and a stranger they will not follow. Unfortunately, when Jesus comes, even though he will be moving in a great way, in an unmistakable way, even still, not everybody will get on board. Just like there were those who rejected the witness of God's power in the days of Moses in the wilderness, like Pharaoh fought against God, Korah and his company rebelled against Moses, Balaam the prophet seduced the people of Israel into idolatry. Just like these, there will be those at the time of Jesus' return who will reject the plain path and refuse to hear the certain sound. Consider those today who have embraced obvious error, evolution, abortion, homosexuality. They are listening with plugged ears. They are looking with blind eyes. When God comes to speak with a certain sound, it will be uncertain to them. God's plain path will be hidden to them. Consider John and Andrew, Jesus' disciples, who before Jesus came were faithfully seeking God. They hear about a man named John preaching in the wilderness. They go check him out. They like what they hear and become John's disciples. Later, when Jesus comes, John tells them to leave him and follow Jesus, which is what they do. John and Andrew had done their homework. They had sought God out and had a feel for the things of God and where God was moving. They had eyes to see and ears to hear. The words of John the Baptist rang true to their hearts. His words were a certain sound to them. By becoming John's disciples, they positioned themselves to be ready to jump on board to what God was really doing in that hour. They were ready to follow the Son of God when he came, and they did. The same thing is about to happen right now. 
in a sense, John the Baptist is coming. The Spirit of God is coming. The Son of God is coming. Think about the following. If God watched over an idolatrous, rebellious nation, miraculously feeding and clothing over two million of them in the desert for 40 years, and giving them a cloud to shield them from the heat by day and a pillar of fire to give them light by night. How much more will God watch over an obedient people, the church, the bride of Christ, which he is preparing for his son, our coming bridegroom. At the end of his life, Moses said to the nation of Israel, you saw all that God did before your eyes in the land of Egypt. Yet to this day, you do not have eyes to see or ears to hear. Israel had rejected God. Jesus said this to his disciples, Blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. Truly I say to you that many people long to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. When push comes to shove and Jesus finally comes, we don't want to be like Israel in the wilderness and be blind to what God is doing. We want to see the path Jesus is walking on and have ears to hear the sound of his voice when he speaks. We don't want to miss him. We want to be ready to go out to meet him when he comes. We want to be with him. We don't want to be like this guy, okay? We want to learn to drink Jesus, our spiritual drink, and learn to eat his words, his spiritual food. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine on us and be gracious to us. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. He gave you freedom. something to drink. Come on, man. Whenever you hungry, he's thirsty. Go deep to despair. He's just a prayer away. Jesus, the living water, the, the bread from there. heaven.